when you are working with probability distributions, uh, and in this case, uh, discrete probability distributions in particular, it's important that you know two uh, that that you know two conditions. You have to. It's kind of like a checkpoint. When you get finished creating your probability distribution, you can kind of check to make sure that you've got things the right way. So, in a discrete probability distribution, um, the probability distribution must satisfy a couple of conditions. So, one of the conditions that it has to satisfy is this. So as I scratch this away, scratch that away, it's like a scratch off card. Okay, the probability of each value of a discrete random variable is between zero and one. So each individual probability in a probability distribution must be between zero and one. Now the probability could be equal to zero and it could be equal to one, but it can't be greater than one or less than zero. So another word that we could put in here is inclusive. That word inclusive means that zero and one are included with the between. So if I look at a probability distribution that I've created before, if you've been watching my videos, you may have seen this one already. As you look here, I've got a probability of uh, my random variable x is the sales per day, and here's the probability of each random variable or each possible random variable. Um, so 0 0.16, 0 0.19, 0 0.15, 0 0.21, 0 0.09, 0 0.10, 0 0.08, and 0 0.02, none of those are greater than 1 or less than 0, so I have satisfied the first condition. But there's another condition that we need to make sure is true as well. The sum of all the probabilities is equal to 1. Um, when you add up the prob all of the probabilities, you need to make sure that it's equal to one. If it's greater than one or less than one, then you've made a mistake somewhere. So if I go back to this one, um, if I add up all of these, I'm hoping that it's equal to one. And we could do that, and, and I, I know that it does equal one when I add all of them together. But let's look at a different one here. Let's, let's verify that this probability distribution is a probability distribution, or let's verify that this distribution is a probability distribution. So let's first of all, let's take a look at this. 0.216, yep, that's between 0 and 1. 0.432, that's between 0 and 1. 0.288 is, and 0.064, all of those are between 0 and 1. Now the second condition that we need to check is are these, when I add up all of these, is it equal to 1? So let's add them all up. 0.216 plus 0.432 plus 0.288 plus 0.064. I add all those together, and there we go. I get a 1. All of that, the sum of those four is equal to 1. So yes, this is a pro this distribution is a probability distribution. Now what if I had one more row here? What if I had something else in my table and it came down and the the, the days of rain had one more outcome and that outcome was 4 and this said 0.012 well, then when I add all of these together, I would get a sum that was equal to 1.012. Well, this is not, you know, point 1.012 is not equal to 1. I probably shouldn't write it that way. Let's write it like this. This is not equal to 1. So if it had one more variable here, or one more outcome, and I had a probability of 0 0.012, this distribution would not be considered a probability distribution. And that's how you can verify if you ha have uh, done your work correctly and if a distribution that you're looking at is a probability distribution. Are each one of these between 0 and 1, and does the sum of all of them equal 1?